We worship you,
you. Amen. Lord, we thank you for this day. Amen. Everlasting King of God, you alone are God in our life, oh God. Amen. Father, when we think the goodness of Jesus and all that He has done in our life, oh God. Father, our soul rejoice, oh Lord. Amen. For this reason, Father, we serve we magnify your name. Amen. Hallowed be thy your name, oh God. Father, as we are brought us, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, your word that is coming, oh God.
may take our seats and give praise in our Bible. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I am free. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I am free. For the blood that is my call. I am Judges 
Judges chapter number 17. Judges chapter 17, verse 6. Judges 17, verse 6. The Bible says, Joshua, Judges, chapter 17, the verse number 6. Amen. Amen. In, those, uh, in those days, there was no king in Israel. Uh -huh. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. Amen. Amen. Go to chapter 18, verse 1. Okay, chapter 18, verse 1. In those days, there was no king in Israel. And those days, the tribes of the Danites were seeking an inheritance for itself to dwell in. Go to the verse, chapter 19, verse 1. 19, verse 1. And it came to pass in those days when there was no king in Israel, that there was a certain Levi staying in the, in the remote <coughs> mountains of Ephraim. Amen. Amen. It's okay. All right. You see that the same statement has been repeated continuously. In those days, there was no king in Israel. And therefore, everybody did what is right in his own eyes. Everybody did what he or she thought was right. Why? There was no king. There was no leader. A life without leadership is chaotic. A life without spiritual leadership is a life without control. A life without spiritual direction is a life that is sailing to eternal destruction. I don't know if you have ever wake up early in the morning and you don't have anything to do, you don't have any place to go, and just you just wake up and you feel bored. In absence of active managing your time, managing your resources very well, there is always a problem. Wherever you see mess in your life. Whenever you see things not joining together, whenever you see that you are not organized, it means that there is no spiritual leadership in your life. The children of Israel have had a problem following God. They had a problem following God from the day that God took them out of Egypt. They declined in their heart to accept the ways of God. And to walk with God the way God wants them to. They decided to walk on their own ways. But God said, I have made a covenant with your fathers Abraham. If it is not based upon the covenant I have made with Abraham, I would have killed all of you. And started a new life in Sali. But because of the covenant relationship that God has made with Abraham, despite the fact that anything that the children of Israel did, God continued to walk with them and never left them alone. Covenant relationship is the basis that God deals with humanity. He said there was no king in Israel. Beloved, when there is no governance in the country, when there is no leader in any group, people do whatever they want. When there is nobody taking the leadership quality in every environment that he or she is, things go bad. In our family, if the husband refuses to lead, there is always chaotic. When you go to homes that the father is drinking, the father hasn't got anything to do, you see that the children go wayward. Every child wakes up early in the morning and does whatever he wants. In such homes, you see that children will go and get pregnant at any time. Right from the Garden of Aden, 
Adam refused to lead, and therefore Eve took the leadership. Adam refused to be there, and therefore Eve took over. Or we can also say, Eve disallowed Adam to leave, Adam to lead, and therefore Eve literally absorbed the authority and the leadership of Adam, unless he were king, the fall of man. Where there is no leader, people fall. When we go back to our countries, when we go back to the whole world, we see that there is chaos on earth today because we don't have spiritual leadership. People are still celebrating because people are living in that. If you don't have spiritual leadership, if you don't have spiritual guidance, if you don't have a man that has dedicated his or her heart to God to live your life, you will always be in a mess. When we come to our churches today, there is a big problem. Every country in Africa, we have pastors and prophets that are raising the dead, causing people to vomit crocodile, antelope. People are vomiting lizard. People are vomiting all this. And yet, we have hospitals full of people that we can feed them. People are healing all kinds of disease, yet we have hospitals all over our countries. Cancer is killing people, we can't heal them. And yet some people will come up, we have been able to heal AIDS. And there is the outbreak of the children of Israel has moved away from Egypt. But Egypt was still ruling in them. They would have preferred to stay in Egypt more than following God. They would more than dying on the wilderness. They would have preferred to fall in the hands of your enemy more than falling in the hands of God. What a painful thing. Turn with me into the book of Exodus. Exodus. There was no king. There was no leadership. And therefore, people decided not to go with the Lord. And the anger of God came upon his children. And the Lord also departed from them. See, they refused to walk with God. God will also refuse to walk with them. Hallelujah. Amen. We will always get what we want. Go back to Africa. Go back to Africa. Now, I think three days ago, I read there is crisis in East Africa. In Kenya, Somalia, that eastern part of Africa, there is a big problem over there. Mm. Crisis, why? Because God is not the leader in such countries. Mm. And when we leave God out of our pursuit, ladies and gentlemen, God will allow Satan to lead us. Exodus. Exodus, the chapter number. Exodus, chapter 13. Verse. Verse number 11. Hallelujah. Amen. Exodus, chapter 13, verses number 11. I read it in Jesus' name. After the Lord brings you into the land of the Canaanites and gives it to you, uh -huh. As he promised on oath to you uh -huh. and your fa forefathers, uh -huh. twelve, you are to give over to the to the Lord the first offerings of every womb. Uh -huh. All the firstborn males of your livestock belong to the Lord. All income in your hands belongs to God. After the Lord has delivered you out. What God is requesting is we give all to you. Mm. This was a warning that God gave concerning what he wants from the children of Israel. He said, the day that I establish you in the land where I want you to be, 
I want your firstborn to be dedicated unto me. Why is God interested in our firstborn? Because when the first becomes God, the last will become God's. In the book of Revelation, he said that he is the Alpha and Omega. He is the beginning and the end. For a long time. We have a period of time. And I believe, so long as man continues to distance himself from God, God is going to distance himself from them. Jesus left his throne from heaven to come down. For 33 good years, he came to live here. That is three good years. He left the Father's throne and came on earth. What did we do to him? We called him names. We rejected him. We refused him. We insulted him. Through it all, he still loved us. And he has given us his mandates because he has made a covenant with us. Because there was no king in Israel, everybody did. What was good in their own eyes? What was good in their own eyes? Because God has no room in their life. And therefore, people did what was good in their own eyes. When we say people doing what is good in their own eyes, what does it mean? It means that people begin to seek things for themselves. When we come to Judges chapter 18. He said, In those days, that's one. There was no king in Israel, and those days the tribe of the Dinite sought them an inheritance to dwell in. For until that day, all their inheritance had not fallen into the among the tribes of Israel. They begin to sit in for themselves. When God is not leading a person's life, people sit in for themselves. When God is not a leader of the heart of your pastor, they are seeking for themselves. Because they know that they have no inheritance in God. Whenever you see preachers seeking things, running for things, want to build a house, want to build a bigger church, want to do this, people are seeking things for themselves because God is not their portion. Hallelujah. Amen. If God is not our portion, if God is not our portion, what can we get? I don't know about you. I don't know about you, but I have made God my portion. I have nothing in this life because He is my personal property. Let's make God our personal property. Let's make Him the owner of our soul. Let's make Him the owner of our life and everything, everything will fall together. Time that we need to dedicate everything that we have to God. It's time that we need to dedicate our children to God. It's time that we need to dedicate our money, our job, our talents and our ability to God. Because by so doing, God will still abide in us. Amen. But so about the people of Israel did in those days, they were building a recipe for disaster. Everything that they did never went well for them. Why? Because God was not part of their pursuits. God wasn't part of everything that they were doing. They took decision without involving God. They took decision without involving God. Let's jump into Ruth chapter 1. Ruth chapter 1. It's part of those days when there was no king in Israel. Everybody did what was right in their own arms. And let's see the disaster that came into some of the people that God was working with. Ruth chapter 1. Verse 1 going. Ruth chapter 1 verse 1 going. Uh -huh. I read it in Jesus. Name. Amen. In the days when the judges ruled, uh -huh. there was a famine in the land, and a man from Bethlehem in Judah, together with his wife and two sons, went to live for a while in the country of Moab. The man's name was Elimelech. 
His wife's name Naomi, and the names of his two sons were Malon and Kilo. Uh -huh. They were every night, every night, every night <laughs> from Bethlehem, Judah, and they went to Moab and lived there. Three. Now Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left with her two sons. Four. They married Moabite, Moabite women, one named Opa, and the other Ruth. After they had lived there about ten years, both Maron and Kiron also died. And Naomi was left without her two sons and her husband. Six. It's okay. In those days where judges were ruling the land, there was no king. And let's see the decision that people took because God has left them. God was no longer interested in their doings. Everybody takes the decision that he likes. Everybody does what he wants. And therefore there was a man whose name was Elimelech. He took his wife and his two children. He took his wife, Naomi, and his two boys, Malon and Chilion. They went into Moab, a far country distance from God. When God is far away from you, you also draw away from Him. Mm -hmm. You do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. You don't involve God in your choices making. No. One of the major problems of humanity today is that we suffer to make choices. Whenever we are about to make very sensitive and very strong decisions that will involve our life, I believe that is the time that we need God most. Amen. The best time that I have needed God most is the time when I was about to marry, when I was about to travel, when I was about to invest money in anything. This man never consulted God because there was no God anywhere. Yeah. Every person did whatever he wants. And you hear what happened. That man died. His two sons also died and left only his wife and the widows. Where God is, there are only widows. The absence of God bring chaotic. I don't know how you are taking this. In those days, there was no king in Israel. And everybody did what was right in their own sons. Everybody took a decision that he thinks will be benefiting the person. By the end of the day, it never benefited them, but it brought all kinds of pains. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God departed from them. God also rejected them. He said, he said, I will love those who love me and I will hate those who hate me. When people say that there is unconditional love, no matter whatever we do, God will still love us. It's not true. If we love him, he will love us. If we leave him, he will leave us. He will not continue to wrestle with man. I think in Genesis chapter 6, God said, I will not continually wrestle with man. Because my choices from day to day are continuously evil, 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 evil. Judges chapter number 16, verse 20. Judges chapter 16, verse 20. It is my prayer. It is my prayer that we will not leave God alone. We will not distance ourselves from God. Because when we distance ourselves from God, there is nothing good. Those who don't have God in their pursuit, I don't know how they live. I don't know how they enjoy this present life. Because life without Christ is pain. Life without Jesus Christ is pain. Full of pain and full of agony. Judges chapter 16 verse 20 please. Judges chapter 16 verse 20. I read it in Jesus. Then she called Samson, the Christians. 
the Christians are up to you. He awoke from his sleep and thought, I will go out as before and shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord had left him. Hallelujah. Amen. Samson never knew that God has left him. Samson was ordained to lead the children of Israel to fight against the Philistines. Mm. He, in the Bible, the only one person that God used to kill the nation. Only one person. During the ruler or the reign of Samson, God didn't need an army. God didn't need soldiers. So in those days, God didn't need soldiers. He needed only Samson. If God could use Samson to destroy the children of the Philistines, don't you think that if God has a leader, one leader, one leader. only one leader, that's what God is leading. It's and that leader can be you. Children, that leader can be you. Amen. We lack leadership. When I read the, the story of Samson, it changes my heart. During the reign of Samson, God didn't need an army. Mm. He used only Samson to disturb 20 good years. Samson alone. He would take a jaw of a donkey and he would kill many people. He would set fire on the uh, tail of horses and he would burn all the land of the Israel, of, of, of the Philistines. He really became a pain in their life. If God can find a man that is willing to give his or her heart to God, God can use him. Where are the men of God in our society today? There is no man. God is always having problem with men that will have his heart. God will bless us for little ability, with little measure of respect, with little Holy Spirit, and people will begin to mess up. We have people in the pulpit today. Most of them, God really called them. Yes. Most of them, they started well. Mm. They started little like this as we have started. Yeah. But when they were growing, Satan came in and offered them a helping hand. And they gave in to that. Mm. Mm. And now, they have won souls for the devil. Thousand times more than what God used them to do. Mm. Our beginning is not important to God, but where we end. Because mm -hmm. many began well, but not all will end well. It is my prayer that we will consistently work with God. Amen. That we will pledge allegiance with God. That where else can I go if I leave you? My life is going to be very chaotic. Amen. Samson. He was supposed to be very cautious of his life. He was supposed to allow God to lead his life. Samson wouldn't do that. And therefore, he was searching for women. We were talking last time. And uh, my sister was saying, it looked as if Samson was a womanizer. He wasn't all the humanizer. Because I believe Solomon was more serious, dangerous than Samson. I think David was even dangerous than Samson. But the reason why Samson case became very, very prominent was he was an exceptional person. He was different among all. A man that has the ability and the power to kill nations. Nothing they could do against Samson will succeed. Mm. So the only thing that they need to run, and that man wasn't like Superman, as today uh, 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 demonic people are portraying to the children that there is something called Superman. Jesus is the only Superman. Hallelujah. Amen. Samson was a tiny man like me, he wasn't a giant. To the extent that they were marveled to know the source of his power. So they were looking for anywhere that he was going to trace the source of his power. And they got him. Guess what? They got him. 
in his wildest lust, in his wildest desire, that could not be controlled. Samson was able to kill a whole nation, but he was not able to control his passion and his desires. You can be very effective, you can be very effectual, but if you are not able to control your feelings and your emotions, if you are not able to control your passion, if you are not able to control your attitude, it can destroy you. Sometimes the gift of God is there, the talents and the ability is there. But if we are not able to surrender, that control me to surrender it unto God. Samson kept some of the parts in himself. God, I can do this. Trust in the Lord with all your minds. And in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Never lead to your own understanding. Because your own understanding will drive God away from you. Man understanding will separate God from him. Man looking things for himself will separate God from him. When we begin to pursue self, when we begin to pursue our own desire, God will never be part of us. Samson thought that he can contain God at all times. And therefore he made his secret known. Don't make your secret known to any person. Not even your husband. <laughs> Because when people come to know your weaknesses, you are gone. I'm not saying to hide things from them. <laughs> but be very careful whom you expose yourself to. Your secret is your nakedness. Your secret is your bondage. In your secret is your future. In your secret is your success. In your secret, and who is your secret? May God be your secret. Hallelujah. But he becomes the stronghold of your secrets. Nobody. Nobody. Samson told Delilah, the secret of my strength is in my hair. When you shave off my hair, you cut off my power. That wasn't all. Samson told Delilah a bit of her secrets, of his secrets. But God was his secret. Because when his hair grew again, he came back to where God is. Hallelujah. Amen. Let the devil know a little bit about you, but always lean upon God. It does not matter what Satan has stolen out of your life. If you can come back to God, God is the secret and He is the source of your strength. Hallelujah. Amen. He is the source of our power. He is the source of our joy. He is the source of our peace. Blessed are those who identify God as their source. And they shall live a happy life all the days of their life. Amen. God left Samson. Why? Not because he was causing adultery. When I read the book of Sam, the, 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 the story of Samson, I see something falling into a situation that he couldn't control himself. Because right from the day one. When he saw for a wife, he saw for a wife in Philistine. And that was the plan of God for God to look for a way to gain access and destroy them. But he was vulnerable. As we believers and one of them believers, the Lord sending us into the world to preach to them, we are vulnerable. We must be very, very careful. We are to go to them, but we shouldn't become one with them. We have to go and preach to them, but we shouldn't allow them to change us. Because the tendency that they will change us is very hard. It's very, very, very. We are vulnerable if we expose ourselves. And that vulnerability is that God will leave us. I am not afraid to die at all. But one thing I'm afraid that the hand of God will be lifted out of my life. Some people don't care. There are so many pastors today in the pulpit. God is not with them. God has left them. Like he left Samson. Because he betrayed God. By exposing his strength. The secret of his life to the Philistines. I don't know how long Samson was put into prison. Because for his hair to grow again in two years. We don't know. Either his hair grew 
to the level that we could wave it or we could uh, 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 style it. But immediately, little hair came into the level where that hair has not been shaved. God gave him the power back to destroy the children of his uh, Philistines. Hallelujah. Amen. The point I want you to understand is be very careful because God can depart from you. And when God was departed from Samson, they plug his eyes off. They removed his eyes. Although they didn't kill him, he died in his own town. God will leave us. And if care is not taken, the enemy will take us far and destroy us. Beloved, 1 Samuel chapter 4, the children of Israel, their story is the story that will change your heart and my heart. I know that some of us, when we read the Old Testament, the modern prophets read the Old Testament. And all they talk about is what Elijah did, what Moses did. Moses added salt into the water, and therefore they will tell you go and add what salt into water and bath. I don't believe in that. I believe in the blood of Jesus Christ. First Samuel chapter 4. First Samuel chapter 4. Hallelujah. We have a God. We have a God who never fails. He will never fail us. And when we fail him, he will not continue to be there for us. He takes delight. He takes no delight in the foods. God takes no counsel in foods. When we refuse him, he will refuse us. First Samuel chapter 4, verse 21 to 22, please, quickly. First Samuel chapter 4, verse 21 to 22, yes. She named the boy Ichabod. Ichabod. Saying, the glory has departed from The glory has departed from us. Ichabod! Don't you desire the glory of God? Because, because of the capture of the ark of God and the death of her father-in-law and her husband. Hallelujah. 22. She said, the glory has departed from Israel. Mm. For the ark of the, for the ark of God has been captured. Hallelujah. Amen. What a painful story. Mm. Eli was 98 years old. His eyes had become dim. There was no leader in Israel. And they were looking for leaders, but they couldn't find one. And because there was no leader, the glory departed from the children of Israel. The glory departed. The glory departed. Ladies and gentlemen, when we Take our hearts from the hands of God. Well, there is no one to lead us. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a problem. There is a problem. The children of Israel has come to the level they don't have any person to lead them. No, no, there were not many. There were still thousands of people in the land. Thousands of men. But God couldn't find a leader. And therefore, the Philistines came back again for the children of Israel because there was no one to lead them to fight. And they took the Ark of the Covenant, which was the presence of God among them from them. Satan is not only interested in causing you to backslide, but he is also interested in taking your source of joy source of happiness, source of existence. The reason that you existed, said that want you take it away from you. Have you seen that pastors causing suicide? Have you heard men of God doing dirty things to die? Because the glory have departed from them. And when that glory departed from a man, like Judas Iscariot, he went and hung himself. Satan will tell you dying is the best because there is no hope for you again. Mm. Beloved, let us be very, very careful. A lot of hope, friend, for this grace. This grace that we have, don't let us play with be 
Because the glory of God can leave us at any time. Be afraid. Be afraid. For the absence of God in your life. Amen. If there is anything that you need to cherish. Is the presence of God. Don't trade with it. Don't allow any person to tell you something that will cause you. Mm -hmm. To miss the glory. Mm -hmm. As you have decided to follow God. Some of us who have now become holiness uh, movement followers. Your pastors will tell you it doesn't matter. Your former pastors will come back to you. Sister, come back to the church. Don't follow this one my churches. This is not a one man church. And this is the only way to heaven. Amen. This is the narrow way church. The narrow way church, you don't have many people. No, you wouldn't have many people because where there are carcass, you see vultures. Whenever you see flies, that means there are dirty things over there. How many times do you see flies visiting you here in Europe? Unless you brought Kobe, <laughs> stockfish, Kako. unless you brought Kako, the day that you bring in this smelling meat. Smelling fish, smelling item into your house. You see flies, how many flies that will visit you? And flies, they don't have long time to live. 72 hours they will die. And our churches is full of flies. People will just come to pick and, and infect others. They come and drop others and they die. So they develop rapidly. One fly can, 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 can hash about thousands of thousands of another flies. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us cherish these graves. Amen. And make God our king. Let him become our ruler and everything. Before the ark of God will be taken out of our life. Before our souls of joy will be taken out from our life. David. When the glory of God left him, he cried to God. Cast me not away from your presence. And take not the Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of your salvation. And renew the right spirit within me. We need a right spirit. We need a right spirit. First Samuel chapter number 16. Verse 14. Now Israel came to Samuel. After the act departed from them, then they said, No, let us come to our senses. We cannot continue to live like this. The day that men of Israel lost the act of God, they felt that something is wrong. So they came to Samuel and said, Samuel, now we need a king. We need a leader. Let us cry unto God for God to lead, give us a leader. Lo and behold, God gave them a leader. His name was Saul. Saul became a leader. He couldn't survive. He couldn't survive because he refused to depend upon God. He was seeking for his own thing. He was seeking for his own desire. He was seeking for his own power. He forgot that it was God who made him a king. First Samuel chapter 16. First Samuel chapter 16. Please let's read the verse 14. 16, 14. First Samuel chapter 16 verse 14. Uh -huh. It says, By the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord mm -hmm. troubled him. The Amen. Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. Amen. What will cause Saul to lose the Spirit of God? When he comes, we invite him. But when he is living, we sack him. God's spirit will come only by invitation. How people that come to me, Brother Gabriel, please, I want you to pray for me that I will get the Holy Spirit. I say, somebody cannot pray for you to get the Holy Spirit. You need to desire Him. You need to invite Him. Nobody can pray for you. To receive the Holy Spirit, not, nothing like that. He doesn't wear like that. Because He doesn't force Himself in people's life. upon him, he received the Holy Spirit. You are a liar. Which hands? Oh yes, he 
this anointing is from me. When I lay my hands upon him, he received the anointing. What kind of anointing? You are a lawyer. You are a thief. You are an arm robber. You are a deceiver. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The Holy Spirit is not somebody's personal property. Now when I remove my dress and put it on, 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 on uh, uh, unless, unless we receive my anointing. It's not like that. It's lies. I don't believe in self-foolish teachings. That Elijah put his mantle on, on Elisha and he received double portion. Who told you? Who told you that Elisha gave them? Elisha had a double portion from Elijah. No, it's not true. Elisha operated from different level entirely where Elijah was not operating. Now before Elisha became a prophet, who told Elijah to go and anoint Elijah as a prophet? Was it Elijah, Elijah himself? No. Elijah was tired. He reached a level, he said, I'm tired. Kill me and let me go and rest. Am I the only person in this country that you can use? Use somebody else. <laughs> and God told him, go and anoint Elisha as a prophet. Go. And anoint him. If the Lord is not leading you, if the Lord has not called somebody, no man. And that is what is happening in our churches today. Tomorrow I will lay my hands upon unless unless you are called. And this brother will begin to mess up his life. How did you know that you are called? My pastor told me that I'm called. Call many men of God today and ask them. I think, brother, brother Michael. I was reading one of his messages on Facebook today. Michael. He said, who called your man of God? Were you there when you were called? Who called a pastor? Are you sure that God called a pastor? If God called him, he wouldn't mess up his life like that. If God had truly called him, he would sit under the feet of God and allow God to lead his life. There was no king in Israel. And everybody did whatever he wants them to do. When God is not the king in your life, ladies and gentlemen, you do what he wants to do. It is about prayer. Those of you here and those of you who are going to watch this video, it is about prayer that you cry to God and you make God your king over your life. Amen. 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 And allow him to influence your choices. Allow him to pinpoint the area that you need correction Allow him, humble yourself before him every day. Fall under his feet rather than falling into the feet of the enemy. Why did I make David exceptional king? He said, Lord, there was a time that he counted the people of Israel and the anger of God burned against him. And God gave him three years of farming uh, or, or two years of war or something. And God gave him three choices. Oh, God will kill the people. He said, Lord, I'm ready. Let me fall under your hands. Let me fall under your hands. I prefer to fall under your hands. Let us fall under his feet. Rather than falling in the arms of Satan. It is rather for us to lie prostrate in the presence of God. Whether we have nothing, that we can rich in the hands of Satan. It is perfect. It is peaceful. To have nothing working with God. Now becoming a millionaire without Jesus Christ. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It is far, far, far better. Life will make meaning because you have hope. You have hope in the Lord. In the Lord. Amen. Although he will slay us, Job said, yet will I trust him. That was what Job didn't sin. The Bible said that in all his way he didn't sin. He kept on trusting in God. In all his deception, he was still trusting in God. Kept on trusting in God. That I know. I don't understand what I'm going through, but I know that one day God will bring me that understanding. And I will stand firm. Hallelujah. Walking with God, ladies and gentlemen, we can lose God at any time. And many have left God 10 years ago. And yet they are spreading that infection. They are spreading that infection. When you go to hospital, there are some places they call it isolation. They will isolate you. If you have a diarrhea, if you have MSR, 
some infection diseases that are contagious. Any person that comes close to tuberculosis, they will isolate you. You'll be in the ward, but they will have your confinement. And if somebody is coming to you, he needs to put on apron. He needs to cover his nose, cover his hands, cover his vital position because you are very dangerous. Some of the pastors that you are following, they are more than dangerous. On your nose. Now those infections will not come closer to you. Mm. When you are a nurse and you are going to attend to such people in a very secretive or secluded area, every nurse that will dress like somebody who is going to theater. You need to cover your nose. You need to cover your hands. Sometimes you need to wear gloves. About three, three kinds of gloves. Have apron. And when you, before you leave that room, you have to wash your hands. And everything that you want into that room remain in that room. You don't take anything out. You go to these fake pastors, these fake ministers who are pursuing their own interests. They claim that they have healing power. Why don't they go to the hospital? Why don't they go to prisons? I believe that we can go to prisons and people will see us and they will be convinced. That they won't come there again. Yeah, what happens in our environment? Evil. Evil is growing. If there is God in our community, if there is God in our houses, if there is God in our hearts, we will preach Christ to people. And people will have hope and expectation in God. There are some people that come to us every now and then. And all of them, they see God in you. And they say, I want God. Every day, the Lord, some people are believing that the work of God. God is looking for men. I have every day people that come to me on Facebook and say, Brother Gabriel, I need your God. I want you to pray for me. I want you to be my pastor. I want you to be, I need your God. I believe that we need to live that standard. That people will come to us and need our Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us raise the standard of crimes above every other area. Let us raise the standard of Christ and give these children the hope that there is still God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When we become selfless of our own, when we become selfless and heaven, heaven, heaven is our pursuit. Because this world has nothing more to give any longer. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This world is not our home. We are pilgrims and strangers. One day you will wake up and everything that you have doesn't belong to you any longer. Yes, oh yes. One day, one day, sometimes when I went, I go to work and I see these elderly people. Now you need to hold your hands before they can walk. You need to get them to toilet before they can even eat themselves. Sometimes, some of them, they, can't, they don't even know where they are. You need to clean them. Because they have become like little children. Their sense of shame is gone. They don't care any longer. They don't know anything. One day, we will get there. Mm. One day, mm. that somebody will hold your hands. Somebody will read what the doctors want to do with their life for you. Today you are standing, you think that you are strong, you are so you can you can say anything. One day, that day is waiting, and I pray that that day will not be taken out of your hands. Let them take that one day out of your hands, but let Christ never be taken out of your hands. Hallelujah. Amen. First Samuel chapter 16, verse 14, please. 16, 14. Uh -huh. mm. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, an evil spirit from the Lord. <laughs> the evil spirit didn't come from Satan. Sometimes we think that every evil spirit is from Satan. No, 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 no. God can send evil spirits. What are those evil spirits then? They are one of the demonic agents that God can still send them. 
Don't you know that Satan is working for God? He is. Everything is in his control. So this, it was a sign. When you read in the book of Revelation, it is God that is giving all this spirit the power to do what they are doing. So if we want Satan to lose us, let us run to God. If we want Satan to leave us, let us run to God. Let us run unto him until we see his face. Let us run unto him until we have his presence. Let us run unto him until we have no place to go. Saul became a king. Not because he was a king. He was nobody in Israel. He was a coward. Who did he know what to do with his life? And his father donkey went astray and he was following his father donkey. He didn't know that God has appointed him as a king. When he became a king, he started stepping out of his area of authority. Mm. He started doing things that God had not told him to do. Pastor, the day you step out of the area of preaching the gospel, and you begin to prophesy because you are not a prophet, you are stepping into the area where the Holy Spirit will live you. Now we know we have prophets, prophets, doctor, senior apostle. <laughs> hey! People have all these titles. And behind this title is a big chain. Nice ring. That is a title. I was listening to one of the notorious guys. Sometimes I go and listen to them and, and hear their foolishness. And he was saying that even Apostle Paul, when he was ordained, he was given a ring. <laughs> Apostle Paul was wearing a ring. I said, wow, I wish I could have face to face with this man I asked him. And look at the chain that this boy is wearing and the necklace and the ring on this part. I say he's one of them. Oh, my like, dear. Yeah. The Spirit of the Lord is no longer in the church. Why? Because we have demonic pastors. Demonic people. Claim to have been in Bible school. But they have never been to the holiness school. <laughs> they are in the Bible school, but they have never been in the holiness school. No. Therefore, they can't preach holiness. No. Unless those who have gone to holiness school can preach holiness. Amen. Unless those who have allowed themselves to be trained by the power of the Holy Ghost. Yes. That one day, so they have, I have no power of my own. Everything I have is because of you. Amen. I have no power of my own. And therefore, when people come, for you to anoint them, you tell them the anointing is on your knees. The anointing is in your room. The anointing is in your belly. Water it and let it grow. The anointing is in your heart. It is in your mind as you consecrate your life to live for God. There was no king in Israel. And people rejected God. And God rejected them. Saul rejected God's hand. Saul rejected God's leadership. He refused God to do what God is supposed to do. He went to war. God told him to go to war. And God told him to kill everything. But when he went, he said, no, I can't kill this. The day that you disagree with God, that is the day that the Holy Spirit will leave you. Yes. Oh, I don't know what I have done. But these days my dreams is, uh, Pastor, I can't dream any longer. And things that, that was the first day that you departed from God. You didn't take the counsel of God as something valuable. You didn't accept the counsel of God. God has established the rules. And the rules is fear God and obey all his commandments. Fear God and obey all his commandments. When a person refuses to fear God and refuses to obey all his commandments, that person brings himself or herself in a position that God will be drifting out of his mind. the Lord has departed from us. Saul thought that he is still with God. Saul thought that God is still with him. Ladies and gentlemen, when God leaves us, we will never know. We can still preach. We can still do miracles, fake miracles, because some of the miracles that happens 
It's not because of us. It's because of the faith of the people. Sometimes people go to these places and get their miracle. It's not because of those pastors. Sometimes those of them who are working under these fake ministers, some people get a real touch of God. You know? Yes. God can do it. God can still do it. Although that place is sinful ground, yet God can still touch his people. And the touch is that people become convinced that this place is a wrong place. Have you been into a place that having been there for a few times, you feel that something is wrong? Something is telling you, God is talking to you, that leave that place. Leave that place. You may go, you are hearing, you are healing and everything, but God tells you that this is not the place for you. He, leave that place. Something told me, something told me, I felt like this. And most of the time, when it is too late, the people realize that, mm, I felt it. I thought like this. He is speaking every time to us. He is speaking every day. He is talking to us every day. But the question is, are we listening to what he's saying? Hallelujah. Amen. It is my prayer as I'm bringing my message to an end. We have other points to talk about. When man depart from God, God will also depart from you. It is my prayer that you and me will not allow God to depart from us. Amen. 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 God has been departing from his children in the past. He is still departing from his temple. Now let's read the final one. Ezekiel chapter 10 verse 8. The Lord is departing from his people every day. When people refuse to obey God and walk in his counsel. Ezekiel chapter number 7. The verse number 8, sing, please. Who is there quickly? Ezekiel chapter 10. Verse 8. Verse 8. I read it. 18. 18. I read it. Then the glory of the Lord departed from over the threshold of the temple. Mm. The Lord departed from the temple. It is my prayer that in your temple where you worship God, the glory has not departed yet. Because some of the churches where we are, it is not the glory of God. They call it a Shakana glory, but there is nothing like that. People are somersaulting, people are vomiting, people are falling. It is not the glory of God. How can I know that it is the glory of God? Where the glory of God is, there is purity. Where the glory of God is, there is holiness, there is righteousness, there is sanctification, there is truth, there is nothing fake. In that place. There is nothing fashionable. In that place. Every person that is pursuing God. Nobody that is pursuing himself or herself. So if you are in a place where you are pursuing yourself. You want healing. You want good marriage. You want a good work. You want the demons in your family to die. The glory of God is not there. It is my prayer. That you don't worship God where his glory has departed. You don't seek God for where he cannot be found. You don't run after him for where he is nowhere to be found. Hallelujah. Amen. Shall we rise up as the ladies prepare quickly our communion in the name of Jesus. And those of us need to talk to God now. I want you to begin to talk to God. Rise up and talk to God. Talk to God. Pray the Lord. Anything I have done. Anything that I will do. To cause your glory to depart from my life. Oh God. Take my heart away from that place. In the name of Jesus. Come before God and ask him to forgive you. Ask him to forgive you of every sin. Ask him to cleanse you from anything. Change your heart. 
from any fear. Talk to God. Come, children, come. Come on to pray. Pray and talk to God. Say, Lord, change me. Lord, change my heart. Lord, change my mind. Lord, change my soul. Lord, change my wing. Transform me to yours. Mold this to yours, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. My love belongs to you, O oh God. My heart belongs to you, O oh God. My mind belongs to you, Jesus. I surrender my will to you. I surrender my ways to you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. She did a little boss in the mama. He had a little bit of a boss in the mama. Maybe you are listening to me. Or you are going to listen to me. Or you are going to listen to me. And you feel that the presence of God is no longer in your life. The day that you gave in to that boyfriend. The day that you gave in to that girlfriend. That day you felt that the presence of God is gone. Your desire to pray is no longer there. Your desire to study the word of God is no longer there. Your desire to go to church is no longer there. You have no interest for church. When it is Sunday you prefer to go to work. When it is Sunday you prefer to stay at home and watch television. And watch football game. The glory of God has to part from you. And then the dangerous ground that you have come. Cry out to God. That Lord give my heart back. Cry to God that God save my soul. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Call the glory back. Let us call the glory back. I need you. I need you, Jesus. I need you more. More than yesterday. I need you more. More.
confess Jesus Christ and cleanse him from all unrighteousness. And we are going to invite his strength into our life. We are going to invite his power to dwell with him until the day is end. We need the strength to finish well. We need the power to occupy until he comes. The day that we are in are very, very dangerous days. Where the world is offering us leadership. Where demons and Satan, Islamism, Catholicism, and all the demonic forces are offering us a choice. But beloved, we have no other good choice apart from Jesus. So the Bible says that the Lord asks his disciples to do this every time when they meet. The Bible says in the book of John, the chapter number 13, that the night before that he died, he gathered together with disciples and he removed his robe and he started washing the disciples' feet. He washed their feet and he said, I am making you clean. I believe the word of God and the message of God have brought conviction into your heart is the washing of your feet. And after that, he took a cup. He took a bread and broke it and said, take it and eat. For this is my flesh, which is given to you and for many, for the redemption of your sin. When he had finished, he took a cup and he blessed it and said, take it and drink. This is the blood that is sharing for you. That will help you to lay for me. That will help you to live every day sanctified, every day consecrated. As high as we can go, we need the blood. As defensive as we can be, we need the blood. So let us pray and say, Jesus, Jesus. I need your blood to heal me. I need your blood to save me. I need your blood to sanctify me. I come to you this afternoon by the virtue of your word that you died on the cross for me. You shed your blood for me that I may live for you. This afternoon, I have the token of your blood in my hands. I have the token. Of your bread, which is your body, in my hands. As I eat and drink, I know I will be healed from every sickness. I will be healed from any allergic. I will be healed from any diabetes diseases. I will be healed from any chronic diseases. I will be healed. From any violence. In the name of Jesus. As I drink your blood. I will live for you. As I drink your blood. No weapon of the enemy. Formed against me. Shall prosper. As I drink your blood. And I eat your flesh. I will be whole again. I will receive the strength from above. As I drink the blood. I call upon the power of God. I call upon that I will dwell with you all the days of my life and I will be seek your glory until you come in Jesus name now let us eat and drink the blood oh the blood of Jesus now lift up your hands and thank you for the blood
and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God richly bless you all. Bless you. I do apologize.